People choose to collaborate with you based on the tale of potential they've made up in their head. So what's your tale of potential? It better not be that you're great at getting shit done. Maybe we've never met, but I know that you and Cinderella have one big thing in common. You get shit done, a lot of shit done. You do this in all aspects of your life, school, home, family, parenting, community, volunteer gigs, and on and on. But most especially at work. You do it to prove yourself. You do it for the reward. Let's say a raise to go along with a spot on the team with the juicy strategic project. That's surely waiting on the other end. You do it because getting shit done is great. And you do it to the point that getting shit done is what you're known for. As a creator of Tales of Potential, I call this being a get shit done girl. And you might be one of them. Yes, even if you don't consider yourself a girl. Do you have a job? Then you're probably known for getting something done, right? Don't get me wrong here. Getting shit done is often why people pay you. And your effort is entirely admirable. I'm 100% positive that people love and praise you for being brilliantly good at getting shit done. The number one answer to why is so-and-so awesome? Well, it's because they're really good at getting shit done. Other people love it. And it's also why they trust your particular kind of magic. And yet I'm afraid that you, my dear, are courting disappointment. Why? Because when you're a get shit done girl, you're not teaching them your tale of potential. You're actually teaching people to give you more shit to do, which you get done. So they give you more to do, which you get done. Do you see what's happening here? Let me illustrate my point using my most famous get shit done girl, Cinderella. What did she hear all day? Clean the hearth, cook the food, fix my hair, sweep the cinders. If someone asked her to do something, Cinderella always said yes. And get it done she did with a song and a smile. This consistent delivery of what was asked of her created an expectation that Cinderella would complete each project with little to no complaint. Just make it happen, they would demand. You'll also notice they gave her fewer resources with every project and expected her to prove that she could handle it. And handle it she did, to the point that they trusted she could always figure it out. So why would the family ask for anything different? Does any of this story resonate with you? Are you a get shit done girl like Cinderella? Let's turn the tables for a moment and imagine Cinderella was working for you. Whatever task you give her, she takes on with grace and delivers the project on time, under budget, and perfectly. Take a beat and imagine someone on your team who can make the impossible happen and happen every single time like magic. Wouldn't you keep giving her things to do? Wouldn't you start to trust that you could hand one project after another to this brilliant person? Getting shit done is a critical part of a job. It's what builds trust and confidence in you. But at a certain point, if people only know you for getting it done, don't be surprised if they keep asking you to perform more get shit done magic making, just like Cinderella. And if they only know you for your ability to execute, they're not going to know you for your ability to think. You won't get to be the person who decides strategy, aka the one who chooses what shit gets done. Do you want to be wanted for what you've done or what you could potentially do? What, dear Cinderella, do you want to be wanted for? I'm sure it stings to hear this. You probably had no idea your hard work was going against your desire to be valued as a strategic and creative thinker. That's okay. We can solve this problem. Acknowledgement is the first step. Know that your value is not only your ability to crank shit out. It's also your sense of how, when, and why you approach a task. You have a strategic, creative, and collaborative style. Do you know how to describe it to someone else? This leads me to your second step. Start teaching others your tale of potential. Share your approach to how, when, and why. Help them recognize and remember your potential as much as your past. Teach people how you think as much as what you do, and then you'll be known for both. Your magic is a combination of your past and your future, what you've done and what you can do. And as your aspiring fairy godmother, I want everyone to hear both your stories so we can see your magic and you can make all our dreams come true.